On April the 19th of 2023, Uber Eats driver Randall Cook was making his last delivery for the day at a home in Holiday, just north of Tampa, Florida. A surveillance camera captured the 59-year-old walking up to the residence just before 7 p.m. and then being yanked inside. Cook was never seen alive again. His wife would report him missing after he'd failed to answer her calls and messages. Law enforcement checked security footage from the area which showed 30-year-old Oscar Solis and another unidentified individual carrying trash bags around the side of the house the day after Cook's disappearance. When the police searched the home, they found the red delivery bag that Cook had been carrying, as well as trash bags and blood-soaked rags. The delivery driver's keys and wedding ring were discovered in a room at the house. As the search progressed, the police found some of Cook's severed body parts in a cooler and trash bags on the property. They determined that Solis had pulled the delivery driver inside and without warning or provocation, stabbed him 35 times before dismembering him. The two weren't known to each other. On April the 25th, Pasco County Sheriff Chris Noko announced Solis's arrest in a news conference, stating that he was part of Mara Salvatrucha, or MS-13. The gang was notorious for the cruelty and brutality of its members, who were known to use extreme violence to consolidate power. Solis, who had the number 13 tattooed in the center of his forehead, had been released from an Indiana prison in January. After serving over four years for burglary and assault, he was reported to have stabbed another inmate during his incarceration. The brutal killing of Cook, who was a father of three and a stepfather of two, had been entirely random. Noko condemned Solis's crime during the press conference, saying this was demonic. What he did was demonic. Updates on the matter indicated that prosecutors were seeking the death penalty for Solis. Number 19. Diana Riveros Instacart delivery driver Diana Riveros was dropping off a food order at a home in Cooper City, Florida, on October the 6th of 2023. As the customer opened the door, her massive German shepherd shoved her out of the way, escaped the home, and charged Riveros. The attack was captured on home surveillance. The dog pushed the delivery driver to the ground and proceeded to maul her. The owner threw herself on the German Shepherd in an attempt to control it, and it eventually retreated. With blood running down her hands, Riveros returned to her vehicle and called 911, screaming, help me, into the phone. The woman was rushed to the hospital and treated with 30 stitches for injuries to her foot, leg, arm, and hand. The injuries left her unable to return to work for weeks and she told NBC6 that she struggled sleeping in the attack's wake as she woke up in fear of the German shepherd that had savaged her. She urged pet owners during the interview, lock your dogs because we're the ones who are going to be affected. Number 18. Luis Rodriguez Moments after he'd completed a delivery outside the Caden Apartments in Orlando, Florida, 22-year-old Amazon driver Luis Rodriguez was ambushed by two robbers in broad daylight. The incident took place on January the 13th of 2023 and was captured by the surveillance cameras inside the driver's truck. One of the men stood outside the vehicle while the other, 22-year-old Archimedes Divinard, jumped inside. Rodriguez tried to get behind the wheel, but Divinard rushed him, pressed a handgun to his neck, and then kept it aimed at him. The driver surrendered various personal items, including his cell phone, debit card, PIN number, and watch. Rodriguez later described for Fox 35 what he felt as the robbery unfolded, saying, It's frightening, almost hoping I don't die. As Divinard went to steal packages from the truck's cargo area, his accomplice briefly popped inside through the driver's side door. It was enough for him to later be identified from the footage as 23-year-old Joel Jr. Army. He and Divinard had extensive criminal records with 85 felony charges between them and 11 felony convictions. The duo fled in a white van but were both arrested within days of the robbery. Announcing their capture on social media, the Orange County Sheriff's Office wrote, We hope they will stay locked up for a long, long time. Rodriguez wasn't physically hurt in the incident, 
but didn't go back to work as he reportedly feared returning to the area where the robbery had occurred. Number 17. Juliana Sagaram A New York City DoorDash driver was arrested on two counts of petty larceny in September of 2023 after she'd taken advantage of her job to pilfer packages from two homes. 33-year-old delivery driver Juliana Sagaram from Queens was captured by a doorbell camera approaching a residence in Manhasset on September the 3rd, clad in a tank top and a yellow skirt while wearing sunglasses and AirPods. Sagaram stepped up to the front door holding a brown bag containing the delivery, which reportedly consisted of items from a Chipotle in the area. Without any hesitation, the woman grabbed a package that was in front and then turned around with the DoorDash bag still in her hand and walked away. Sagaram picked up the pace and jogged back to her grey SUV, which was parked nearby. The delivery driver turned porch pirate repeated this scheme at a home in Sands Point. Sagaram was ultimately apprehended after the 54-year-old Manhasset victim reported the package stolen. Number 16. Jorge Luis Dupre La Casa. In August of 2019, Jorge Luis Dupre La Casa and David Gonzalez were making a delivery at the home of a senior citizen in Boca Raton, Florida. The company for which they worked had been contracted by Best Buy to deliver and install a washer and dryer for 75-year-old Evelyn Smith Udell. Gonzalez went outside to make a few calls, while 21-year-old La Casa talked to Udell, who was alone in the house at the time. Gonzalez heard screaming and went inside to find the elderly woman on the floor, burning and covered in blood. Nakazo fled the scene in the delivery truck, but was later apprehended by the police. He admitted to officers that he'd used a mallet to strike Udell in the side of her head, knocking her unconscious. He then took a toxic chemical from the garage, doused Udell and the room with it before setting the woman on fire. She ultimately died of her injuries. Nakazo didn't provide a reason for the brutal slaying but claimed to have been under the influence of cocaine and marijuana. A video from the Boca Raton interrogation room would later show him crying and rolling down the floor in the fetal position. He told investigators that he'd never see the light again and at one point begged, just take me out of here and kill me. He was charged with first degree murder, battery and arson. The case is ongoing and prosecutors claimed they'd be seeking the death penalty. Number 15. Angela Summers in April of 2020, an Indianapolis postal worker was gunned down because she'd reportedly refused to deliver mail to an address where there was an aggressive chihuahua. Two days before she was fatally shot, 45-year-old Summers had taken to Facebook to talk about the problems she'd had with the pet. She claimed that because it was a small dog, the owners just let the nasty little devil run around. Summers added that, on multiple occasions, she'd asked them to restrain it, also mentioning that she had to spray it twice. As dictated by procedure, a dog warning card had been placed inside the homeowner's mailbox three times, with the last informing them about the curtailment of mail. As Summers was working her usual route, 21-year-old Tony Cushingberry confronted her about not having received his COVID-19 stimulus check. Cushingberry repeatedly asked for his mail and then approached Summers. It was at that point that the letter carrier sprayed him with mace. Cushingberry pulled out a gun from the right side of his waistband and fired a single shot, killing the mother of one. When questioned by the police, the shooter claimed that he knew the mace was non-lethal, but that it had caused problems with his asthma and he, in turn, wanted to scare the postal worker. Before he was identified as Summer's killer, the US Postal Inspection Service had offered a $50,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. Cushingberry was charged with second-degree murder, assaulting a federal employee and discharging a firearm during a crime. Number 14. Destiny Rodriguez In June of 2020, San Antonio woman Destiny Rodriguez was killed by a suspected drunk driver. 27-year-old Rodriguez had dreams of one day becoming a makeup artist, but had lost her job during the pandemic and subsequently found work as a food delivery driver to provide for her four children. Rodriguez was on the job on June the 13th when the driver of a Hummer lost control of the vehicle at the Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and Walters intersection. The SUV crashed into Rodriguez's car as well as another smaller vehicle, the driver of which was transported to a local hospital with injuries. Rodriguez suffered severe trauma and was pronounced dead at the scene. The man behind the wheel of the Hummer, later identified as 39-year-old Lionel Martinez, fled the scene along with a passenger from the vehicle. Martinez was arrested 
and faced several charges that included driving while intoxicated, intoxication manslaughter, as well as failure to stop and render aid. Number 13. Jason Francis and Alice Robinson. In December of 2018, a car accident involving a Domino's pizza delivery driver set off a chain of tragic events that culminated in the death of a couple. 29-year-old Jason Francis and his fiance, Alice Robinson, aged 26, had settled in Perth, Australia, after traveling the world together. By all accounts, the couple, originally from the UK, was happy and in love. Francis, a former RAF firefighter, was an asbestos technician in the construction sector while Robinson worked for a lifestyle magazine. On December the 22nd, Francis was out drinking with friends from his rugby club. He called Robinson and said that he'd be home in a few minutes. Francis was only a few yards from their front door when he was struck by a Volkswagen Jetta, driven by an 18-year-old Domino's pizza worker, whose identity wasn't made public. Francis suffered devastating injuries, to which he succumbed at the Royal Perth Hospital. In the aftermath, the delivery driver claimed that he'd struck a motionless object lying on the road, and it's unclear if he was held legally responsible for the accident. Robinson reportedly collapsed when she heard about the accident. She arrived at the hospital and, upon being told that her fiancé had died, said she needed some air but instead of returning, then drove off. A few hours later, Robinson sent a heartbreaking message to Francis, in which she expressed her love and the intention to join him. She was later found dead in her car from what was reported as a combination of alcohol and pills. Robinson's parents blamed her death on staff at Royal Perth for allowing her to leave alone while she was in a visibly distraught and fragile state. A joint funeral service was held for the couple, who'd been together for over eight years while Francis's rugby club raised $44,000 to help return their bodies to relatives in the UK. Number 12. Jessica Halverson. In 2014, a Wisconsin postal worker was killed in a single vehicle crash after she lost control of her SUV on a highway in the town of Caledonia. 22-year-old Jessica Halverson was on her delivery route at the time, and it's unclear what had caused the vehicle to leave the roadway on the right side. Speed and alcohol were later ruled out as contributing factors. The 2001 Chevy Blazer continued off-road for about 400 feet before drifting into the highway again and going over a steep ditch on the left side. The SUV ended up in a cornfield and overturned. Halverson, who hadn't been wearing a seatbelt, was ejected from the vehicle. She wasn't breathing and bystanders performed CPR until the emergency services arrived at the scene, where Halverson was later pronounced dead. Number 11. Ryan Muncy. On January the 23rd of 2021, an Uber Eats driver was killed in a robbery gone wrong in Holton City, Texas. 31-year-old Ryan Muncy was making a delivery in the Fort Worth suburb. She never reached the customer's door as she was attacked by two teenage boys, whose identities weren't disclosed because of their ages. Muncy suffered a fatal stab to the neck, with her body subsequently found in a breezeway, and the attackers made off with her phone. According to her widowed husband, Graham, he and Muncy were both homeless when they met, seven years before the tragic incident. They stood by each other's side, got an apartment, tied the knot and started a family. Muncy worked as an ambulance driver for the disabled and supplemented her income through the delivery job. She worked tirelessly to secure a future for her three children aged 5, 7 and 11, whom were described as her world. In the investigation that followed her brutal murder, the police tracked her phone to a dumpster at the Mercantile Square Apartments. They interviewed residents and examined surveillance footage, which ultimately led them to the two teens living in the building. On January the 27th, the pair were taken into custody without incident by a SWAT team and subsequently charged with capital murder. Number 10. Sherry Ingold. On January the 16th of 2020, Mississippi postal worker Sherry Ingold was fatally shot in Atala County while she was on the job. 58-year-old Ingold encountered Roland Mitchell Dampier, a man in his late 20s, along the Mississippi Highway 35. As she was delivering mail, to a retired nurse. It's unclear what interaction, if any, the two had had before Dampier shot the postal worker in the head. She passed away at the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson. Earlier that day, Dampier had attempted to kidnap 26-year-old Andrea Goss from a supermarket, but she'd managed to escape. After he'd gunned down Ingold, Dampier was shot by law enforcement during their efforts to apprehend him, but the wound he sustained wasn't fatal. Ingold's family had been told in the months leading up to Dampier's trial to avoid talking about the case, as it might affect his prosecution. 
However, they became vocal about it following rumors that Dampier might be deemed unfit to stand trial by reason of insanity. The family had expected him to be handed a life sentence, but instead he was sent to a medical facility where doctors would assess his mental competency. Ingall's daughter, Christy, continued to bring attention to the case even in her engagement photos in which her fiancé held up a sign which read, Justice for Sherry Ingold, while she held one with, You murdered the mother of this bride. Number 9. Passion Overstreet Vinette Chicago postal worker Passion Overstreet Vinette died following a freak accident which occurred on January the 28th of 2017. The 28-year-old was on the job and inside the Norwood Hand Car Wash in the Lincoln Square neighborhood. 56-year-old Gerald Kirkpatrick drove his Volkswagen Golf through the closed overhead door of the car wash. According to a staff member, there were strobe lights mounted outside meant to alert drivers. Overstreet Vinette was struck by the car and pinned underneath the door, suffering crushing injuries. First responders arrived at the scene and after she was extricated, Overstreet Vinette was taken to St. Francis Hospital in Evanston. Unfortunately, her condition didn't improve and she was pronounced dead. In the aftermath, her family sued both Kirkpatrick and the car wash, seeking an undisclosed amount of damages. Number 8. Stacy Corley On June the 17th of 2021, a DoorDash delivery driver was killed in Walnut Creek, California, in what was described as a road rage incident. Aspiring rapper Stacy Corley was on the last delivery of the evening when he got into an argument with the occupants of an SUV near North California Boulevard and Ignacio Valley Road. They'd accused 25-year-old Corley of cutting them off, to which he'd reportedly responded by rolling down his window and showing them the middle finger. It was at that point that 18-year-old Dylan Baker pulled out a gun and let off at least eight shots into Corley's car. The shooter had reportedly used hollow-point bullets and the delivery driver was fatally struck. Investigators identified the SUV by its Oregon license plates and subsequently interviewed the occupants. Those who cooperated with the police reported that after the shooting, Baker had joked around saying, I think I emptied my clip. The authorities released photos of the shooter and he subsequently turned himself in to face charges of murder and personal use of a firearm, which made him eligible for a sentence of 50 years to life. Amazon delivery woman Itzel Ramirez was jailed by law enforcement in Alameda County, California on a $100,000 bond after she brutally attacked a 67-year-old woman. At around 6 p.m. on June the 3rd of 2021, Ramirez was at an apartment complex in Castro Valley. She was met outside by a woman whose identity wasn't revealed and who reportedly asked her about the whereabouts of her package. The delivery driver told her that it would be arriving soon and the woman waited in the lobby for about 15 minutes before inquiring about the status of her delivery once more. It was at that point that Ramirez allegedly made some remarks about her white privilege the customer was said to have replied with an expletive before turning around and walking away. As captured by CCTV, Ramirez then charged her from behind and threw a flurry of punches at the woman's head. Footage from the surveillance cameras positioned inside and outside the building would show Ramirez pushing the victim against the front entrance and pummeling her relentlessly. The battered woman was seen hunched over and covering her face during the driver's onslaught and subsequent reports indicated she'd been left with a broken nose and other visible injuries. Ramirez then pulled back and exchanged words with the victim who entered the building. The video, which subsequently went viral, ended with Ramirez dragging some packages inside. Upon being questioned by deputies, the delivery driver claimed she'd acted in self-defense even though the footage suggested she'd been the main aggressor. Ramirez was still wearing her Amazon vest upon being processed by the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. She was arrested on suspicion of felony battery causing serious bodily injury and felony elder abuse and booked at Santa Rita Jail. Number 7. Incident in Newcastle on August the 24th of 2020, a brawl between two delivery drivers was recorded by another motorist as it unfolded on a busy street in the center area of Newcastle, England. The two men, each on a motorcycle, had collided prior to engaging in a physical altercation. One of them, who worked for Deliveroo, threw a punch at his Uber Eats rival who then attempted to wrestle him to the ground. In the short clip, which was subsequently picked up by multiple media outlets, 
The duo grabbed at each other's necks as their motorcycles lay in the middle of the road. Frustrated drivers were heard honking at them repeatedly in an effort to break up the confrontation. As reported by a Northumbria police spokesperson, nobody was seriously injured and the incident only briefly affected traffic in the area. Number 6. Takadine Boudain On the evening of January the 3rd of 2020, Uber Eats delivery driver Takadine Taki Boudain was riding his moped through North London, England. The 30-year-old and the driver of a white van both made a right turn in Finsbury Park. An argument broke out between them as Boudain was reportedly upset by a maneuver the other driver had made. The latter later identified as 28-year-old Nathan Smith emerged from his vehicle with a knife in hand. Surveillance cameras captured the moment that Smith swung the blade at Boudain, who tried to defend himself with his crash helmet. As the fight moved to the pavement, Smith landed two forceful knife blows in rapid succession to the delivery driver's chest. In spite of his injuries, Boudain chased after the van and struck it with his helmet before it drove off. He then collapsed. The delivery driver suffered a wound that was nearly three inches deep and in spite of the paramedics' efforts, he died at the scene. Upon returning to his home, Smith didn't tell his family about the altercation and the following day flew to Austria using his brother's bank card and passport. When investigators went to Smith's home, they recovered the white van he'd been driving on the day of the attack on Boudain and found traces of blood that matched the victim's DNA inside. Smith's father reportedly showed them a video believed to have been taken by the wanted man with views of mountains and lakes. Smith would remain on the run through Europe for an estimated 17 months. He was eventually taken into custody at Heathrow Airport on June the 3rd of 2021 after flying to the UK from Lisbon, Portugal. During the trial that followed, Smith claimed that he tried to defend himself after Boudain had brandished a screwdriver. The jury ultimately agreed with the prosecution that it was Smith who'd been the aggressor in the confrontation. He was found guilty of murder and jailed for life with a minimum term of 21 years served. Number 5. Taiwan George An 11-second clip earned over 12 million views on social media in the fall of 2021 after a scantily clad woman was recorded leaving the back of an Amazon delivery van. The incident took place in Tampa, Florida and was captured by a man named Dylan Hook who was staying at a hotel across the street. He was inspired to do so after noticing the blonde woman enter the back of the van. The clip was recorded several minutes later when she emerged from the vehicle with her cell phone tucked in the neckline of her short black dress as the driver held the back door open for her. Hook's brother later posted a video on TikTok where it gained millions of views and thousands of comments, the vast majority of them comically speculating as to what had transpired inside the van. One user wrote, So this is why my packages are always delayed. While another suggested that the woman had the Prime Plus membership. In the wake of the video's popularity, the Amazon worker Taiwan George was fired as the company deemed he'd violated the policy that banned allowing unauthorized passengers to enter the delivery vehicle. George later gave an innuendo-laden interview for TMZ suggesting that the public were correcting their assumptions about what he and his partner had been doing in the van. He stated it was making ends meet, basically if you get what I'm saying, before suggesting that any other man in America would have done the same in his situation. Number 4. Vitali. In 2021, a TikTok clip went viral after the user, believed to be from the US, shared doorbell footage of an Amazon worker seemingly stealing the laptop she'd just delivered. Vitali, who went by at Talk To Me Instead on the platform, used the text-to-speech feature to ask, did this lady really just take my new MacBook? The unnamed woman was seen stepping back to take a photo of the package for proof of delivery after leaving it on Vitali's doorstep. She then grabbed the laptop before returning to her truck. The TikTok clip was viewed over a million times with a number of users reacting in outrage and some baffled by the fact that the delivery driver hadn't checked for cameras. Other commenters expressed doubts over the video's authenticity or came to the driver's defense claiming that she likely needed the money. Vitali subsequently expressed an intention of going to court over the alleged theft. In light of the attention brought to the incident, an Amazon spokesperson reported that it was under investigation while also noting that it wasn't a common occurrence. Number 3. Rebecca Daigle 
a 23-year-old woman was arrested by law enforcement in Nashua, New Hampshire in 2022 and charged with theft by unauthorized take-in. In late September, officers responded to a call from an Amazon distribution facility. The complaint concerned Rebecca Daigle, a driver for Amazon Flex, a service that enabled individuals to use their own cars to deliver the company's packages. The police found that she'd picked up a load of packages on August the 29th, which she'd failed to deliver at destinations in Massachusetts. Daigle was taken into custody on felony theft charges for which she faced up to seven years in prison. Hey, it's Carl. Be sure to subscribe and leave your comments in the comments section below and maybe, just maybe, we'll get your video going next. Number two, Domino's delivery driver. In the summer of 2021, the video of an unnamed Domino's delivery driver caught stealing an Amazon package went viral on TikTok. It initially showed the man placing a pizza box in front of an apartment door. As captured by a doorbell camera, the man then took a cardboard box from a doorstep before walking away and returning to his delivery vehicle. User at Pretty Princess 30, who posted the video, claimed that the package contained items that were meant for her sister's newborn baby girl. The woman was reportedly able to track down the porch pirate with ease because the Domino's Pizza where he worked was the only one that made deliveries in her neighborhood. The video, which quickly earned several hundred thousand views, concluded with the thief in handcuffs, an ending that most commenters described as satisfying to see. Stick around after number one if you have not yet seen our episode about when working the graveyard shift goes wrong. That's coming right up. Number one, incident in Northumberland. A few days before Christmas in 2019, a delivery driver was left unconscious in the street following a car theft. On December the 16th, the unnamed man was on his route in New Biggin by the Sea in Northumberland, England. He stopped his Citroen Berlingo to drop off some packages at a home in Derwent Water Road. Simultaneously, 32-year-old Anthony Newell and Adam Gray, aged 28, targeted his van. Newell got into the Citroen's driver's seat while his accomplice followed behind in another vehicle. As the car thief took off at high speed, the delivery driver jumped on the hood of the Citroen in an attempt to stop him. Newell kept driving with him clinging to the hood until the man couldn't hold on any longer. The delivery driver was flung from the vehicle and upon landing on the pavement, hit his head on the curb. The thieves fled the scene as the driver lay bleeding and unresponsive. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition and was placed in a medically induced coma, but ultimately survived. Newell and Gray were arrested on robbery charges, while the former also faced a further charge of causing serious injury by dangerous driving. Newell pleaded guilty to all charges in 2020 and was sentenced to five years and four months in prison. Gray admitted the lesser charge of theft from a vehicle and was given a community order along with being placed on a four-month home curfew. 27-year-old Marta Vento was working the night shifts behind the front desk at a travel lodge in Dorset, England on December the 9th of 2020. The young woman, originally from Valencia, Spain, was taken entirely by surprise when a male guest launched a sudden and vicious attack on her in the foyer of the Bournemouth Hotel, later identified as 32-year-old Stephen Cole. The man chased Vento into an alcove where he repeatedly punched and kicked her until she became unresponsive. She ultimately died from multiple blunt force head injuries. Vento was the only employee behind the desk for the night shift and consequently wasn't found until horrified guests came across her bloodied corpse the next morning. In the incident's aftermath, it was revealed that Cole was a diagnosed schizophrenic who'd stopped taking his prescribed medication. As a result, he'd been experiencing persecutory delusions, auditory hallucinations and disorganized thinking, which included the belief that smoke detectors were surveying him. Following a mental health evaluation, it was determined that Cole's attack had been triggered by the way in which Vento had smiled at him from behind the reception desk. He was reportedly staying at the travel lodge on his parents' dime after being kicked out of another hotel for attacking two guests just days earlier. Though initially detained for murder, Cole eventually pleaded guilty to manslaughter by reason of diminished responsibility. In the summer of 2021, Judge Angela Morris of the Winchester Crown Court gave Cole an indefinite hospital order in lieu of jail time. Number 6. Asante Campbell 
before leaving home to work the graveyard shift on the night of February the 29th of 2019. North London man Asante Campbell said goodnight to his fiance and their infant daughter. After departing from his Hendon home, 24-year-old Campbell, a rail worker, was accosted by a group of men who stabbed him through the window of his car. The injuries he sustained in the ambush attack ultimately proved fatal. Police found DNA on the knife sheath used in the stabbing, which was linked to a drill rapper by the name of Javel Hall, aged 18. He was reportedly able to evade capture for several months after the incident by hiding out in Leeds and Manchester, but was eventually tracked down and arrested. During the resulting trial at the Old Bailey, Hall attempted to pass off his own fingerprints as those of his identical twin brother, but his claims of innocence were rejected. Although the motive for the deadly assault wasn't immediately made clear, he was found guilty of murder, along with an accomplice named Kofi Abusa. They both received life sentences with minimum terms of 19 years. In court, Campbell's mother Angela made a victim impact statement in which she recounted her late son's charitable nature and infectious presence. She revealed how Campbell had previously stepped in to play football with a boy who was alone at the park, supported the family of a girl with thoughts of self-harm and, on one occasion, even drove a complete stranger to the airport. Number 5. Esvin Vasquez on November the 13th of 2022, a violent altercation at a gas station in Queens, New York, left 23-year-old Esvin Vasquez dead. The young man who worked with his brother at a furniture store to provide for his wife and one-year-old son had reportedly stopped at a BP station after completing a late-night shift. However, as he was filling up his tank, Vasquez got caught up between two large groups of strangers who were in an argument that eventually boiled over into physical violence. During the course of the brawl, Vasquez was struck over the head with a wooden board and suffered severe injuries that ultimately claimed his life. Although the cause of the fight wasn't known to the police during their initial investigation, eyewitnesses claimed that there were roughly 10 to 12 people involved and that it happened at around 2 a.m. M.D. Scheiker, who was working at the gas station, reported the incident to the authorities after witnessing one of the men grab the wooden board used against Vasquez from a nearby construction site. In the wake of the young man's death, his loved ones honored him with a makeshift memorial near the gas station, outfitted with flowers and candles. Police records indicated that Vasquez, who'd been living in New York for a year and a half after emigrating from Guatemala in search of a better life for his young family, didn't have a criminal record. About a week after the incident, the Regional Fugitive Task Force took 20-year-old Michael Santander into custody in connection with Vasquez's killing. He faced charges of murder, manslaughter, gang assault, and criminal possession of a weapon. Number 4. Andy Ferguson A 22-year-old intern from Canada was killed in a head-on collision with a gravel truck early one morning in November of 2011. Although the highway was clear and weather conditions were favorable, Andy Ferguson fell asleep at the wheel, causing his vehicle to cross the center line and end up directly in the truck's path. In the wake of the young man's death, his family came out and publicly blamed the accident on his extreme fatigue. He'd reportedly worked 16 hours over a 24-hour period, starting the previous morning and ending with the graveyard shift that night. Ferguson was studying radio and television production at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology in Edmonton. One of the requirements for him to graduate from the program was completing a four-month unpaid practicum for Astral Media's local pop rock radio stations. In addition to the hours he put in for the practicum, he was also working shifts as a paid intern. Ferguson had complained to a friend about the exorbitant hours he was being asked to work as recently as during his final overnight shift at the station prior to his death. The Ferguson family subsequently sought to have legislation implemented to protect unpaid interns from exploitation. Number 3. Queensland Postal Service Incident in March of 2017, multiple articles surfaced online detailing how Australia Post employees were forced to work around the dead body of their co-worker for several hours during an overnight shift. Three postal employees informed the press about the incident, which began after a 49-year-old contractor went into cardiac arrest and died in the Nambour Australia Post building during the early morning hours of March the 9th. Police were called to the scene, but employees at the Queensland facility were allegedly pressured to continue working despite the man's body still lying on the floor as they awaited the arrival of an undertaker. 
A blanket was placed over the man and several witches' hats were positioned around his body, but workers otherwise went about their normal routine for the remainder of the graveyard shift. When news of the incident hit the internet, many empathized with the distressed postal employees, one of whom said that Australia Post should be held to account on why dollars were more important than people's well-being and the deceased's dignity. In response, a spokesperson for the mail company stated that while the facility in question had remained operational as the authorities sorted things out, none of the staff members were forced to work. The Community Workers' Union of Queensland publicly offered support to those who were left traumatized by the tragic situation. Number 2. Kerry Brown Irish nurse Kerry Brown got into a car accident while driving home from the graveyard shift at Kerry University Hospital on the morning of October the 2nd of 2019. The 26-year-old, who was a finalist at the London Rose of Traley Beauty Pageant in 2016, reportedly crashed into an SUV on the N21 in County Kerry. The young woman's vehicle was lifted into the air while the SUV was sent back about 10 feet by the force of the impact. Emergency crews consisting of some of Brown's colleagues rushed to the crash site, but were unable to save her. She was pronounced dead at the scene in spite of extensive life-saving efforts on the part of first responders. Meanwhile, the other motorist, later identified as John Power, needed to be hospitalized for the injuries he sustained. Through an official inquest into the matter, it emerged that Brown had veered into the path of the oncoming SUV in the moments leading up to the collision. Power, a self-employed engineer, reportedly took evasive action by reducing his speed considerably and even driving into a barrier to avoid Brown's Volkswagen Golf to no avail. The coroner found no evidence that drugs or alcohol had played a role in the tragedy. Rather, it was Brown's extreme tiredness brought on by working a 12-hour overnight shift at the hospital that was identified as the accident's primary cause. Number 1. Britrain Marcellus Gray at approximately 4.45 a.m. on May the 13th of 2022, gunfire broke out in a McDonald's located at 1130 Crane Highway South in Gambrills, Maryland. Responding police officers came upon a deceased man who'd sustained apparent gunshot wounds, later identified as 23-year-old Odenton resident Betrayne Marcellus Gray. The victim had reportedly been working the graveyard shift at the fast food eatery's drive through window when he was shot to death by a customer. A couple months later, homicide detectives announced that they'd identified a suspect in the case. 21-year-old Jaquan Green from Middle River was the individual determined to have been responsible for the deadly shooting, which investigators believed to be a targeted attack rather than a random act of violence. Green was taken into custody on a charge of first-degree murder. However, according to police records, he was also charged in connection with an unrelated triple shooting that occurred in Prince George's County on June the 13th, which resulted in one death. As of the latest updates on the case, investigators were still working to ascertain the circumstances that led to Green's fatal confrontation with Gray. Thanks for watching.